All right, so Brian's looking at the CDIO trade, and this was at 8.27 in the morning, he wrote me. So, like, he's watching this in pre-market, the CDIO stock in pre-market, and the volume is all over the map at different prices. When you see buyers and sellers ranging from 3,000 to 7,000 shares on the bid and on the ask, meaning, like, level three and level four, you know, Brian's book map screen is filled with orange up and down, how do you know when to get in? Hope this question makes sense. No, it definitely makes sense. And with that, let's bring Bookmap back up briefly, and we'll go back to CDIO. So one thing quickly is this: uh, on Bookmap, uh, you know, if you have Thinkorswim or the main version, it's just in the heat map settings here. But you you can try and toggle these settings to you know play with the uh, discrepancy of the the sharpness of red and orange versus all the other colors. So I play with this from stock to stock. I kind of like to have it kind of at this setting here. But, you know, that makes it a little bit easier perhaps for me to focus on what the biggest lines are on the morning. So here's a good question, kind of with this setting here. You know, we briefly talked about CDIO and the, the entry off of three as it pulled back to support. But let me ask us, where do we see the darkest shade of red on this chart. One price, one price only. Don't need to be fancy with it, folks. Just one price that we're looking at there. 340, right? And you know what? That was there for a good period of time. It was. I mean, this thing popped at 8 o'clock. You know, it showed up at 8.43 in the morning. It got pulled, but it was there for about 20 minutes, right? You know, so... It's there for a reason I'm led to believe. I feel like there's some significance to why there's 69, 70,000 shares on the ask at 340. Now, did he get pulled and did they place the order somewhere else? I don't think so. I don't see that. I don't really see that pattern here. I don't really see a new red line popping up randomly, right? So that, that's a question you could ask. But otherwise, now 350, you assume to be a big level. That's why I have a blue line at 350 as well. But I made sure to remember 340 was an iceberg order that got pulled uh, at some point throughout pre-market there. So, you know, although it broke under this price here and broke below 340 and dropped off, well, hey, I mean, if I wanted to try and hit the perfect trade, I got out on this trade that I was in on from three. I got out at 319. You know, it popped up more. So I left some money on the table. I could have gotten out in theory right at 340. You know, for that to be such a big iceberg level in pre-market, although they pulled it, I'm still finding that to be a significant point of interest uh, across the day. So it ended up breaking below it as support. Support became... Resistance. That's all. Uh, Dan says, "Great, that was a great question from Brian. There, that adjustment is key for me, particularly in end of day trading of futures indices. I like that. That's good to know from Dan. So, not as much in relation to the equities market. So, for anyone that trades futures, little insight from Dan, one of our gold students. Dan uh, has access to the phase one, two, and three classes. So." You know, he's been learning up on book map and going through the settings himself. So he says, everything lights up tightly around the current price. Uh, well, when it's like too much orange, it makes it so hard to read, right? I mean, even if I have the settings the way I do, and if there is a stock that just straight up doesn't have big levels, then I'm not going to trade it because it just makes it harder to read. I'm a cyber group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.